Welcome back, it's your guy Engineer Mojo. Now if you hop in your car and you hear this, no horn working, no sound, then this is the video for you. To get it started off fast, the tools are displayed on the screen. I will go into more detail later in the video what some of these tools are. Also in the video, I'm working on a 1995 Honda Civic. This process also applies to 92 to 2000 Honda Civics. You also have your Integras as well that this will apply to. So let's get this process started. Before buying any replacement horn, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your fuse is not faulty or defective. So you want to go inside your engine compartment, locate your fuse box. Most fuse boxes will have a map either on the top or the inside of the cover and just look for what says horn. In my case it's right on the bottom middle side. You'll see a 20 amp fuse is responsible for the horn. You want to pull that fuse using either a set of pliers or a fuse puller and just look at the middle section of the fuse and see if the little metal portion is burnt away and not having a continuity connection. On the screen I'll quickly show what that looks like if you haven't seen that before. Now in my case, the fuse visually looked fine, there seems like there's continuity, the metal strip is intact, but I wanted to make sure, so I actually took another fuse from the fuse box that was a 20 amp that I knew for sure worked, and I placed that fuse in the location of the horn, and I retested my horn, and sure enough, it didn't work. So now I knew that the actual horn itself was faulty. With that check out the way, now it's time to locate your horn and go ahead and get the replacement started. So in my case, it's behind my front bumper, right below the radiator on the passenger side of the vehicle. There are a few screws on the top of the bumper you'll need to remove. There are two screws on the bottom of the bumper. I'll show you those locations as well. And you'll have some screws on the side if your bumper is still intact. Mine is not, so I don't have those side bumper screws. I'll show you those later on in the video where those will be located if you have those. Here I'm showing the removal of the top screws and bracket plate. These are removed with a Phillips head screwdriver. Here's the location of the two 10 millimeter bolts that are on the bottom of your bumper. Removal of these bolts in my bumper slides right off. Remember, as I said, I don't have the two headlight mounting bolt locations on this bumper because it's been through a lot in its 20 something years of being on the car, but you may have yours on your vehicle, so make sure to double check that you remove those bolts as well. If you're lucky to have those bolts, that is the location where you'll find the attachment, right there in the corner, and that's located by your headlights on each side. Here is the OEM original manufacturer horn right in front of the radiator on the passenger side. It's just a circle. It has one bolt, 12 millimeter for mounting bracket. Now here is the replacement horn I bought. This is an aftermarket. It's called a freeway blaster. It's supposed to be a lower toned horn than the original horn. In the box came a new mounting bracket, some female connectors for the wires, a ground wire, and also a locking nut. Now there are two ways you can install these aftermarket horns. One way is you can cut off the pigtails to your original horn connector and splice in the new wires for the aftermarket horn. I don't like cutting my original connectors just in case I want to use it in the future. So in my case I will do a tap in and a splice. To do that I will take the ground wire that came with the horn, or you can make your own if it doesn't come with the horn, I'll plug that into the grounding location on the horn. I will then loop that onto the bracket mounting screw and that will create the grounding location so that way I don't have to splice or cut into my ground wire. I'm grounding directly to the car. I'm connecting it as so. After that I will take a new piece of wire. I will connect that to the other female part, plug that into the female connection and then I will take that wire and splice into the power for the original horn. I'll show you more in detail how that works. This is just a video montage of me creating the new power wire that I will splice into the original power location for the horn. I'm using 18 gauge wire here, doing a strip, connecting that to the female connector. I will then crimp that down.
quick pause to show you the wiring at this point. I have the negative connected to the bracket that will connect to the car to complete the grounding. I have the new positive wire that I created that I will use to tap into the existing power. I'm using a T-tap splice to do that. That's that red piece I have in my hand. You can pick that up from your local big box store or online. Essentially what it does is it allows you to tap into an existing wire without actually cutting the wire completely. So as you see on the one side it kind of blocks it out. That's where you feed in the new wire. And on the other side it is a pass through location. The pass through location allows you to pass through the existing wire so that you don't have to cut it. You don't have to mess with your existing connections. It's just a nice clean simple way to tap into and gain access to power. You can do the same thing for a splice for grounding as well. With the wires pretty much ready, I'm going ahead and removing the old horn, taking my 12 millimeter wrench and removing that bolt and that bracket for the old horn. The horn will have one pin connection that you'll have to disconnect by pressing in the tab. As mentioned earlier, I do not want to cut my existing wire, so I'm going to cut the loom just a little bit to expose the wires I want to tap into. You have the black wire, which is the ground, the blue wire, which is the power. I will be tapping into the blue wire, given that I'm going to use the bracket as my ground, so I do not need to tap into the black. I will tap into the blue. At this stage, I'm re-securing the new horn with the bracket. Make sure that the ground wire is securely attached to the bracket at the horn location and that I have a secure attachment from the bracket to my actual car. This will ensure that I have a nice complete ground. At this stage, I'm looking at the wires I want to tap into. Again, it's just the blue wire that I'm going to tap into, given that I've already established my ground with the car bracket. I'm going to cut the excess wire that I don't need, use my T-tap to splice into the power, secure that in and get this installed correctly. This is just a short video montage showing that actual installation process of the wire. After securing the T-tap, I choose to tuck the wires back in that little small cubby hole out of the way. Install is now complete. Now it's time for testing time and the moment of truth. Success. It's always good to have a first try success on a fix. I give it a few more tests just to boost my ego and then I go back to installing the bumper. And that concludes this video. Hopefully it was very helpful. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and more importantly, let me know down below in the video comments if there's anything that will make this process easier. Any tips for myself or other viewers? I love those the most. That is the most helpful for the community, YouTube community. One more time, thanks again. Appreciate your view. Hopefully it was helpful. I'll see you next time. I'm out.